Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So we are in my kitchen. I'm going to do a quick little breakfast, something healthy. I want to just fry up one egg. I'm going to cook a couple slices of, never had it before, but it's apparently real bacon is what it is bacon rounds. Never had this before. Where's the ingredients? Oh, there's still a lot of ingredients. I thought it was just going to be, see, I need to get better at looking at the ingredients before I buy it and bring it home. Because my goal is to eat food that my body recognizes that's 100% natural, like, like pork, <laughs> instead of, you know, there's probably 12 items here. Pork, water, salt, sugar, sodium, phosphate, smoke, sodium, something, sodium nitrate, spices. Ugh. Anyway, I'm still going to cook a couple slices, but I'm going to do an egg. I might do a toast, but I'm not sure. But I do have my water that was in the fridge, really nice and cold. This is my one of my favorite tumblers, guys. It keeps everything so cold and then i got my straw donuts on oh it's the crack of dawn outside right now <laughs> it's dark it's it's gonna be a dark week the sun's not gonna be out for a whole entire week how does that happen i do not know but our snow is pretty much melted and that's not typical for where we live. We're used to being under three to four feet of snow right now. So what are you guys making for breakfast this morning? I would love to know. I bought this Tupperware dish right here at Value Village. And it came with a... I have it. It's right here. It's in my drawer somewhere. Oh, here it is. I keep it so that I don't lose it, but it came with this thing. Literally just screws in. But say if you're going to somebody's house and you want to bring a healthy snack tray, there you go. Has the cute little handle. But if you just want to, if you're going to someone's house to watch a movie and you want to bring your own healthy snacks or pack a meal where the edges see where they don't touch, I love the separations. And this is Tupperware. It's really, really old Tupperware. And I got it really cheap at Value Village. So you guys check, keep your eyes, excuse me, keep your eyes open because places like that, you can find really, really good things for a really good price. Because I never buy Tupperware new. It's just out of my budget. I try to do things as smart as I can. And I, some things I'm really, really smart with and save money. And then other things I'm like, way overboard and the opposite so it's about balance working on it but I'm excited for breakfast this morning I'm really excited so my girls are up in the window looking outside oh so today I would like to go through my closet I bought three bins, three big storage bins, so that I can put my Valentine's clothes in a bin, Christmas clothes in a bin, and fall clothes in another bin, guys. So it's going to be a chore today. That is work for me, but I, I'm cozy. I got my cute little gingerbread robe on. It's warm. It's cozy. I didn't even have the heat on at all last night. All of our heat was off. <sighs> Because it's turning spring weather. The, it's turning mild. It's crazy. But anyway, I put it on this morning now. I have the heat on and going to let our home heat up nicely. Is the pan hot yet? See, if I put my egg in too early, I've done the mistake before where the pan wasn't hot enough. And then my egg doesn't cook the way I want it. I don't know if people, what they call it, sunny side up or whatever. But I cook both sides of my egg. But I want the yolk not cooked. My pan was hot enough. When you hear that nice sizzle, my egg's going to be fine. That's how I like it. 
Ooh. I need a little bit of Himalayan salt, just a little bit. Oh, my egg is, there we go. Now let's flip it. See, I need, for me, this is my, this is something that will make me sick. If I have an undercooked egg, if any of the egg white is raw, like if it's liquidy at all or like too juicy, if it's juicy or liquidy, I will puke. Also, if I find a surprise egg shell in my egg, I puke. So those two things, um, the scrambled eggs, most restaurants and that, I don't eat out much, guys, but when I do, scrambled eggs is like the safest. Sometimes you ask for an egg the way I'm cooking it now, and they overcook it, the yolk is no longer running. Sometimes they undercook it, where you get bits of the white that's still liquidy, and it, it literally, when I say it makes me sick, I am not exaggerating it may it turns me off and then my stomach is nauseated and I'm not joking so this is how I cook the perfect egg my hubby likes it like this too if he's the same if there's any white that's on cooked it's it's disgusting we can't do it so but anyway oh just a plain egg cooking on the pan smells beautiful and I've never cooked up that bacon before, but this looks beautiful too. Now this is a treat. This is not something I ever bought before, but I just thought, honestly, what I was thinking is, oh, that's real bacon. There wouldn't be much preservatives and it's my fault. I should have looked at the back. Um, maybe compared to other bacon, maybe it's less preservatives. I really don't know. But anyway, it's not like I'm having five pieces. So I want to share something with you guys. So on this channel, I'm I'm saying that I want to um, what do you say that reverse? Hold on, I'm having a hard time. I want to reverse insulin resistance one meal at a time. Sorry that it took me such a long time to spit that out. Anyway, so how the doctor explained it to us is that your body is like a warehouse. If you go to Costco and you're looking for something specific, they have everything well organized. So you can say, how many toilet paper of this brand do you have? They look through their computer, they haul it up. Now I'm making enough for my husband as well. He's going to have two slices and I'll have one. wonder if I should make one for the girls. Yeah, I think I'll make one for the girls and they can share a slice. They love bacon too. Um, anyway, so compare your body to the analogy of being a warehouse. Very well organized. Uh, you know exactly where items are. You have a proper inventory, you know, how many of this you have, how short you are on this, what sells quick, what's slow, okay? Now, as long as everything is well, as long as people are doing their job, you know the count on everything, you know the outdates, you're all organized, you're good to go. But, how the doctor said, when you start introducing processed foods, foods that come in cans, packages foods that are foreign to the body that is not naturally made like fruits vegetables real milk real eggs when you start introducing other things your warehouse becomes all upside down you it things happen you got packages piling up you don't know how much of this you got how much of that and that's how he explained it and it just it just did something to my mind in a positive way to help me understand that as long as you're eating real food, food that has not been damaged or altered or processed, so you can make your beautiful chicken and ham and turkey 
and steak and hamburger and salads and you know because those are real real food but if it came in a box it's processed if it came in a package like you know as long as it's real chicken breast but chicken nuggets are not the same thing and now the majority of people's eating diets look at that bacon guys wow I don't think it's going to be my type of bacon, but my husband, I believe he would love this. Anyway, majority of people's diets comes from a packaged fast food. It's highly, highly processed now. And so many people are getting diabetes. So many people are having kidney issues, kidney failure, all kinds of things like that. Let's just take a moment and appreciate the bacon. Yes, so it makes it easy when you think of it that in those terms. As long as it's natural food, you want potatoes, take a real potato, you can bake it, you can boil it, whatever, but keep your ingredients natural. If you want butter to go on your potato, use real butter, not processed margarine. Um, Cause how he was explaining it is the body is built to take care of itself and heal itself. But because we're poisoning it with all of this highly processed food that has like many chemicals that the body doesn't recognize, doesn't know how to properly deal with, it's poisoning like the liver and the kidneys and it's, and it's so high in sodium, it's so high in sugar, it's so high in all these syrups and saturated stuff that your warehouse gets way out of control. And it, it can no longer do what it's supposed to do. So keep it natural. It's a lot more cooking. It's a lot more work. But it is worth it. Your body will see insulin resistance turn around if you're doing it right. And, you know, that's the way to do it. You want cheese? Get real cheese. Not the processed sliced cheese. Get a block of hard cheese and cut it yourself or grate it yourself or... You know, get things that are, when you look at the ingredients, it's cheese, you know, not all this other stuff. Anyway, that's been helping me prepare meals for me and my hubby here in our home. So, and everything, you even think you want salad and then you want a little bit of salad dressing. As long as 90% of your meal is real food and even if you have 10% processed, just remember that's a huge improvement from probably 90% processed because our typical eating was basically what I would consider healthy on a typical day. But when you throw in all the other things I wasn't considering, making sandwiches for the lunch can, what was it? Whole wheat bread, yes, but it was processed bread, not from a bakery. It was meant to be on a shelf for two, three weeks and it was just loaded with chemicals and preservatives and all this other stuff that your body got to work through and it doesn't recognize, right? So now I buy bakery bread. I go to the bakery and I buy a loaf of either whole wheat bakery bread or multigrain bakery bread. It has so much less processed chemicals and preservatives, guys. It's natural. They're making it from scratch. Another thing, sandwiches for the lunch can. What basically goes on a sandwich, I I used to use a lot of canned flakes of ham, sliced meat, and I realized, oh my gosh, that's all processed too. So now I boil boneless, skinless chicken breast, slice up tomatoes, slice up lettuce, put that on the homemade bread. Now that is a healthy sandwich. See guys, this is what I made for breakfast for my hubby. So this is bread from the bakery. It's uh, whole grain. I gave them three slices of bacon because they really shrunk two eggs. Now all that's on the French toast is cinnamon, vanilla, 
the whole wheat bread and a couple eggs. So, and here's mine. Yes, that is processed Swiss cheese. But I'm just saying as long as you cut out most of your processed stuff, your body's going to, you're going to notice positive changes. Like my husband's sugars have been leveling out and being within normal range. Thank you, Lord. But that's with prayer too, guys. That's not just food. We're doing all of our part. And then major prayer. All right, guys. I just got home. Mom came out with me and I got a couple, a little bag of groceries here. Um, look at those chicken breasts. There's three chicken breasts. They're nice size. So what I'm going to do is probably... I'll probably freeze one and cook two, but cut them in half to make like four. It's going to be good. And then I got a little bag of sunflowers because I want to plant these outside this summer for happiness. Sunflowers are so beautiful. And then I can use the seeds to feed the birds. I got another cucumber because um, we only have one cucumber left. And then I need a new green pepper, and these are beautiful and crispy and fresh. So I got a pack, a two-pack. And then I got a green onion because these are really good, and we're going to have my parents over for, like, a game night coming up. Um, this Friday we made plans with them, so they're going to come here. I'm going to make homemade, healthy barbecue chicken nachos. And when I say healthy, it's because I don't do nachos like a lot of people. We buy the no-salt Tostito chips. They're not Tostito brand, but the chips, the no salt. And then I load it with all the veggies, red pepper, green pepper, yellow pepper, green onion, real chicken breast, olives, jalapeno, red onion. By the way, I was completely out of my red onion, so I got a bag. And I have no white onions at all left, so I got a bag. Uh, and then cinnamon, I've been using a lot. So I got two cinnamon because I barely have any. And then I got two bags of lemons, guys, because I, me and Ellie are going to start doing our healthy teas again, the fruit tea. So we always want lemon in our water and stuff. So it's just a good thing to get in. And then I bought this plant. Um, I don't want to say personal things, but my aunt really needs prayer. Uh, she's in the hospital and I don't know if she'll be coming out and it's very difficult anyway I bought these flowers and I'm gonna put them in my window in the Sun and there's like a lot of blooms gonna come out and I just bought this it's a daffodil but to kind of just remind me of her and you know, just watch it bloom and just be thankful. And uh, anyway, that's what I did. I bought this. All right. So what I want to do now is start on supper. And I'm going to freeze some chicken as well. What are you looking for, boo? Huh? Chicken breast, golden skinless. Yeah, that's what's going to be tonight. Happy? Good. What? Oh. So my goal is to freeze two or I don't know, freeze one at least. I don't know. But I'm thinking for supper tonight to do like the fresh red pepper, green pepper, onion as like a little stir fry. Maybe I'll do like a healthy rice and then baked chicken. I don't know. We'll see. But this chicken is so nice and I have to use my hands. I want to cut it. You see how thick it is? Can you guys see the thickness? So if I cut it this way, I feel like it's going to make even better chicken. Look at this. Two beautiful pieces of chicken. So this will go in the freezer because that'll be for like another time. I wonder, just wait, I gotta wash my hands again. 
And I think what I'll do is wrap one so that That guy. I should have been more prepared, maybe. I think what I want to do is just, I don't know why I washed my hands. I gotta use my hands again. This is what I'll do. I'll just do them in halves, but when I take them out to cook them, I'll do two bags, which is just one chicken breast. I feel like this just makes it more affordable because you really, I don't want to have any waste. I don't want to be throwing food out. So what I do is when I cook a meal, I um, I always make enough for day two for leftovers because we do leftovers just for the first day and the second day, that's it, two days. So look, this here is one chicken breast. So I'll do another one for the freezer and then I'll, I'll make up one for supper is what I'll do because we have to do portioned food and you know, this, packet of chicken breast there's only three chicken breasts and it was nine dollars guys to me that's not a good deal but the chicken itself looks beautiful and has no bone no skin so maybe i should cook this in the pan boo what the chicken because it's I'm gonna cook in the pan, gonna cut it up like thinner yeah i will i think that's how i'll do it and then throw the peppers in the onion right in with the chicken. I think that's what I'll do. Mm. Yeah, it's still cold, but it's warming up. I forget. I forgot to look at the temperature, but it's probably like minus two maybe. But the sun is out today, guys. It This morning I was literally saying it's going to be dark for a whole week. No sun. And you guys, the sun is out there, full force shining. It's gonna warm it up, and it's gonna be a beautiful day. I think, I think we all need it, some sunshine today. I really do. So, a friend of mine, I kind of forget who. Somebody just made. Sh oh, I think it was my aunt. Yes, she had made shake and bake uh, pork chops or something, and I thought, oh my gosh, that sounds so good because I haven't made shake and bake for years. Like. And I'm not making it, I'm not, because I mean, that is packaged and high in sodium and all the flavors, like not just spices, but anyway, the way I'm making this chicken today is going to be flavorful. I'm gonna add our spices, cook it in a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of real butter, and um, it's gonna be really healthy and really, really good. Plus I get to freeze four halves of chicken. So that will be for future use. It's going to be good. So you guys, this is my awesome spice wheel of all the spices that I use on a regular basis. And it is from the dollar store and it's wonderful. But today on the chicken, I'm going to do summer savory, parsley, cracked black pepper, dill, oregano, and you know what? I'm thinking to use a little bit of this everything bagel seasoning. I might change my mind. I don't know. Mm, I'll think about it more. Anyway, got my beautiful spice wheel. I'm just letting that pan heat up because I want to hear like a sizzle. I really want to hear the sizzle to kind of um, close in the chicken juices. When your pan's hot enough, it'll close in the juices, I guess. So I still need to wash the red pepper, obviously, the green pepper too, and chop up those veggies, but I'll do that once I get this chicken on the pan. Oh, I may as well show you guys my little indoor garden. Look, so there's the the beautiful, um, what's that plant called? A daffodil for my aunt, who's in the hospital, guys. Prayer, please. And then I have my Christmas cactus right there and here. Now this one here I planted, um, my goodness, what did I plant? I forget the name, but it was a beautiful flower. And then this was a beautiful flower my hubby got me for Valentine's and that one too. But they are only seasonal, so I don't know. But I'm going to keep them indoors. I'm not putting them outside. And they will come back every year, I think, as long as I don't put them outside. They're going to be okay. Anyway, this makes my heart happy. I have, you guys can tell, like I have my half of my 
shade open, but I'm going to open up the shade and just let the sun flow in pretty soon. It's just when I'm cooking, I don't want the sun in my eyes. Anyway, I'm just going to let that pan heat up a little bit longer before I put the chicken in and then I'll use a clean plate to cut up a clean plate to cut up the vegetables. It's going to be a wholesome good supper tonight is what it's going to be. I'm just going to cut I'm cutting the seeds away from the green pepper right now over the garbage cans so I don't make much of a mess. Did you take your pills, Brule? Okay. Yeah, me and Mom went to Giant Tiger. Like, we were there waiting for them to open. Because that's when you see less people. See somebody outside. Really? Girls! What? A pigeon? Where? Girls, it's okay. Yeah, it's a pigeon. They'll bark at a leaf, guys. It, that's just the way they are. All right. Now that pan should definitely be, we're gonna have a sizzle. This adds so much flavor without the sodium, guys. And if you haven't tried dill on your chicken, trust me, it's a 50,000. I actually have a beautiful YouTube friend that said she started using dill on her um, other meats other than fish now. And I love that. That just made my heart happy. And of course, pink Himalayan salt, which is healthy salt that's not been bleached. It's not been altered. It still has its minerals, which your body needs. So, okay, I'm just going to let that take its time. I'm going to chop up the peppers, the onions. They will go in there once the chicken cooks more. I'm just going to let it take its time and sizzle away. These vegetables, I don't want them cooked soft. I want them cooked hard. So literally just maybe three minutes on the pan. But I don't want them, I want them really nice and still crunchy. Because then it keeps a lot of the nutrients. Pretty soon I'm going to start my compost bin up again. I do that all spring, summer, and fall. But our ground is still, even though the snow is melted, the ground is still froze. So i got to wait maybe another month and then I'll be doing my compost for all the shells, all the skin, and put some nutrients back into the ground is what it will do. 
Now, you guys will notice in, in our kitchen, things are not perfect, but I'm telling you, they're good. All right, let me just throw these onions. The onions are fine to cook with the chicken, so. They're just gonna go in there. But as far as the peppers go, uh, I think, yeah, I'll cut this. Let me go take out the inner and I'll be right back. I'm just washing the pepper good, guys. As you know now, when you buy your vegetables and stuff, they're all sprayed and chemicals and been through so many people's hands and I'm gonna use all, oh my gosh, those onions with the chicken smells so divine right now. The onions flavor is really coming out. Wow. Let's have a bite of this red pepper. Oh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Fresh, crunchy, so good and good for you. All the beautiful vitamin C. Bring you guys back over. That is wonderful. The chickens kind of stuck to each other here. I'll be right back. All right, folks, I got my less reduced sodium chicken broth. I'm just gonna put, I don't know, one fourth a cup maybe. I don't want a lot, just enough for flavor and steam. Now I'm putting the lid on. I'm gonna let that take its time and cook all the way through, probably for about 12 minutes. And then I'm gonna, if I need to add a little bit more liquid, I will, but then we're gonna add the broccoli to steam up the broccoli with the chicken. And yeah, that's gonna be good. It smells divine. <gasps> yum, yum. All right, guys, I had to add some more water at this point because I only added water instead of chicken broth this time. But I want to be generous with the broccoli because that's such a good side. What I do is I try to turn the broccoli, the rough parts, into the water. Mm. Okay. And we're just going to let the broccoli steam up in those juices of the chicken and the onion. All right. Simple as that. I didn't put the peppers in yet. They're still in their bowl over there because I don't want to have them cooked soft. Guys, this smells so good. That broccoli is almost finished being steamed. Just about another minute. Once I clear out this, I'm going to then scramble up an egg. 
Then I'm gonna put the peppers in, and then I'm gonna add white rice that's cooked into here. And for flavor, a little bit of pure sesame oil, guys. As long as you're eating healthy, this is so good, and it's really, really, really good for the kidneys, for your liver, as long as you're eating healthy food. If you're eating bad food, junk food, this just makes it even worse because it's a very high healthy fat, but where's the ingredients? Look, sesame oil, pure sesame oil. Can you guys see that? No. Nope. There you go, sesame. So you just want to make sure it's pure. Keep it in the fridge. There, that broccoli should be done, so I'll be right back. All right, folks, so you can see there's still some leftover juice from the like chicken broth and all that stuff. So I'm gonna make that work for us and cook the egg in it. We're gonna do like a scrambled egg in it. I'll tell you, this is such a good wholesome meal. So this is all I'm doing is scrambling it. And see there's leftover onion in here. We'll let that water evaporate out, but that's just flavor. It's full of flavor from the chicken and the broccoli. But this is, I literally do consider this meal super healthy. Steamed broccoli, boneless, skinless chicken breast, and I'm doing a healthy fried rice. And you can make healthy fried rice, you really can. Now, if you like spinach and you added spinach to this, oh my gosh, it would be so beautiful. Look at that. Look at it bubbling away. We just want to make sure that these eggs are cooked before I throw the peppers in. Mm -hmm. And I want that water to kind of boil out of it. So, Like that would be disgusting to eat as a scrambled egg, but mixed in with the rice and stuff, it's going to be so beautiful. See how the liquid's just cooking right out of it? I'm going to give the water that chance to get out. I want more water out of there because there's going to be some water from the vegetables. So I got dishes to do. Oh, yes. The joy of cooking is all the dishes that comes with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My husband's watching um, Bubbles or whatever, Trailer Park Boys. Okay. There, I'm happy with that. Now, I don't want to have these vegetables cook soft. I want them to be a nice crisp, so I'll let them cook for a minute and then I'll add the rice. But now I'm going to add a little bit of sesame oil, about two tablespoons. But that gives it a beautiful Chinese fried taste as well. It's so good. So let that cook for a moment. Oh, boo, that broccoli turned out good. Yes. Just right. So all those veggies that I'm adding in this bag of basmati white rice. But the flavor that's going to be in here, guys, it's going to be wonderful. I just want those peppers cooked a little bit more before I add the rice. I wish you could smell this. Oh, pray tell. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Another really good thing is if you already cooked up cabbage and carrots, you could add it to your rice. It's so flavorful and so healthy. Add it to a healthy dish, it's really, really good. 
good for you, tastes good, all that goodness. All right, so I'm going to give those peppers a minute to cook, and then we'll come in with the rice. All right, guys. The veggies are softened lightly, but they still got a crisp to them, so that's perfect. The egg is fully, fully cooked, so now I'm just going to add one package of white basmati rice. We're just going to gently fry it. Now, a lot of people use soy sauce and all that. My husband might, but he won't use a lot. Anyway, I just, I'm going to shut the stove off because now all you want is for that rice to kind of marry with, with the veggies and the egg and, and the um, sesame oil. And I'm telling you, this is how you do a healthy, beautiful fried rice. You could add way more stuff to it if you wanted, but this is just simple. And like I said, sometimes when you do it simpler with less stuff, it tastes even better. So, tout fini. That's it. Look at those plates, guys. With the chicken breast, the healthy fried rice, and the steamed broccoli. There's so much flavor. So much flavor. Boo, can you come and do a taste test of the rice, please? Just come and take a spoonful and be honest. If it's not good, tell them. Now, I didn't put no soy sauce on it because you can do that tonight, but just do a taste test and let them know how it tastes, even if it's not good. Be honest. It's hot. Oh, that's good. That's hot. 10 out of 10? Mm -hmm. Does it have like a lightly fried taste? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. So what, 10 out of 10? Really? Oh, good. Yay. 10 out of 10, guys.